Hi guys, I'm Shmee and welcome back to the channel where you join me today visiting my friend The 23 Collection to take a little look in his garage and then in particular at the Porsche 918 Spider. I've been noticing a few similarities with the Carrera GT and 918, then we're going to head out in it, but I just want to quickly give you a sneak peek at this wonderful garage and the cars and display and setup out of my dreams, I think, before we take a look in detail at the 918 and ask the question, is it still the king of the hypercars? Let's find out. First things first, this room full of very, very specific focused cars is just incredible. Honestly, this is the kind of place that I dream of one day being able to display my cars in the videos as well. Just the artwork around the room, the cars currently hiding away under cover, but the GT3 RS here I filmed with before with the 23 collection who has this awesome logo on the wall back there. I love that. But what I want to take a look at now is the two cars parked right here. The latest Porsche hypercar, the 918 Spider, and the predecessor, the Carrera GT. And I've been walking around the two cars and there are quite a few similarities between these two in terms of the design. In terms of the mechanical side, they are complete polar opposites. The V10 of the Carrera GT, the Le Mans derived engine, then the hybrid setup of the 918 Spider. Now you're probably mostly familiar with 918s. We've seen them a fair bit in recent years, but it really brought about this new generation of hybrid technology, what this car is capable of. It has just shy of 900 horsepower. There's a V8 in the back combined with three electric motors, which mean you have well over a thousand Newton meters of torque. It looks super, super awesome in terms of the design with the exhaust pipe exits right there on the rear deck, the full width rear wing, both of these cars have removable roofs, so they are spiders, open top, which is exactly how I like to drive, out for a good, good journey, good drive on a nice road. But walking around them, I mean, if you look at the, the back ends of the two right here, the lines, the shape around the back of the wing with the curve just above the number plate holder is almost the same on both cars. Then you've got the double buttress style rear deck, again, similar on both cars. Then you've got this line around the rear windows which is again almost mimicked between both cars before you get to the window line that has almost exactly the same thing, the same shape and style of roof panels that can be removed and lifted off and in this case stowed away in the front bonnet. Then you come down towards the front where I noticed the glass around the headlights, ignore what's inside, the shape of the glass on the exterior is again almost the same from generation to generation with the badge obviously lining up in the same position. And another thing is this line you see, this crease around the bonnet with the, well, you can see ducks back there for airflow. Again, lines up with the shape of the bonnet on the Carrera GT. Now the CGT had a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated v V10. It has a manual gear stick in here. If we just take a quick look at the inside, slightly earlier generation from the early 2000s, but you've got that proper raw old school feeling, but still with technologies that were new at the time, the engine from Le Mans, the V10, and it just screams away. Then the 918 Spider brought in hybrid tech, completely futuristic design in terms of, well, pretty much everything. I'll just have a quick glance at the interior here. Um, which we'll be looking at in more detail later on. But in terms of the displays, there's a curved display tucked away in there. The central stack is all digital as well. It's all completely next gen around the carbon tub of this car. If I just close the door quickly, let's talk engine. 4.6 litre V8 with 616 horsepower, combined with the triple electric motors, two at the front, one in parallel for the rear wheels, making it all wheel drive, with an additional 283 horsepower, meaning a total of 899 PS in the 918 Spider and 1,280 Newton meters. And I can tell you from previous experience, this thing is a rocket. It gets off the line with the whole system and electronics and trickery that it's performing so quickly, you wouldn't believe. It is literally, well, the fastest, I suppose, non full electric car. Many would argue the Tesla gets off the line quicker. And maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Big topic at the moment, but this came out, well, the first concept was in 2010. It came out for customer cars while being delivered on the road in 2013. Um, 2013 through to 2015, they were delivered 918 cars in total. And like I said, it really, alongside the P1 and the LaFerrari, 
created this new generation of hybrid hypercar, just something completely different to what we'd had before. But we're going to take it out in a moment. I think before we do, it would only be right to remove these roof panels and show you how to do that. So let's fire open the bonnet here and we'll get started. The whole front end is the bonnet. There is some storage plate space in here. You have to unlatch it just here if I can find that. There we go. Oh, did I get the right one? Yep, release it. Lift that up and just look, coming close to this. The carbon fibre around here, the glossy carbon, the whole car is carbon. It is beautiful. Now inside the bonnet space, you have the wind deflector, which will eventually sit on the top of the uh, windscreen to deflect wind. I think it goes that way. Clever little thing to hold back and stop so much air blustering everywhere. For the moment, I'm going to pop that on the seat so that we don't lose it. That would be quite important. Um, you actually start on the passenger side, so I've got this a little bit wrong, but let's pop that in the car. Come all the way back around to the other side. This particular car, by the way, is finished very, very nicely in the dark grey. It's got lots of carbon fibre options like the mirrors and the rear wing um, and on the interior. If I just open up this door and we get started on this, there is a little latch at the back here. It's a, an interesting process. You press it, pull it down, there we go, and then pop up. And you pull this out, super light, made out of carbon fibre, of course as is just about everything on the car. We come back around to the front. I've got to remember which way around. That way around. You put this in here, like so. Just taking that out. So that will protect the two bits of roof. The other one goes on top. And then there's a soft pad on the other side of the bonnet as well to make sure it doesn't get damaged there. Yeah. So we come around, do the other side. Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to slide the seat forward slightly. There we go the button. Press it, pull the latch, up we go. Cool. Become a pro at the 918 spider roof. Should I put it on my CV? <laughs> and then that goes neatly down on top in here, he says. Just gotta push it in, there we go. Like that. That is in place. We can put down the bonnet. Give it a click. On that side, the two catches, done! It's ready to be driven. Now here we are, the engine is running, so we've got the V8 burbling away behind us, but if we swizzle the toggle into hybrid mode or into E mode, we can now go into drive and silently roll out. This is the bizarre, the loudest noise is the electronic handbrake. And out we roll, in silence. Honestly, full electric mode is just the strangest sensation. Now, this car has immense capabilities. Obviously, the Carrera GT and the 918 are so completely different, but what I absolutely love about this and what made it such an achievement at the time was the simple integration of the ability to go between E-mode and hybrid using just the steering wheel toggle. So here you're in hybrid mode, which would use the electric if I or oh, sorry, the petrol if I put my foot down to the floor, but otherwise the electric if it has charge, and it can do 19 kilometers on just electric mode, which means that it's congestion charge exempt if you're in London, or you can go up into sport mode, or you can go one further into race mode, and then you have a red button in the center called hot lap mode if you want full maximum battery attack using every single bit of power and torque, go, 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 because you're racing. Now this car was conceived or first shown to the public seven years ago, nearly eight years ago, I think now. It was early 2010, it was first revealed in concept prototype form. And obviously, the world has moved on dramatically since then. Back then, you had previous generation Tesla, Roadster as the only, I guess, electric sports car on the market. Now you have all of this talk of the new one, which claims not to 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour in 1.9 seconds compared to this car, which was, I think, 2.6 maybe. It does realistically maybe 2.4. The Tesla is still years away. The new Tesla, it's at least five years away. And obviously it's not as expensive as this, but it doesn't do everything that this car does. So let's wait and see what that car actually brings to the table in future. We can't drive one yet. For now, what we can do is enjoy this and get out of the traffic lights slightly and be able to experience what this car is like to drive again. Those upshift burps. Super, super smooth. You've got a seven speed PDK. I'm just driving it automatically at the moment. You've got the button on the left for manual, so now I could manually downshift. Very, very, very quick shifts. And then the burbles, the exhaust noise is right behind your head. And that is so loud, even at four and a half thousand RPM. 
and it grumbles and this car has been driven properly it's been taken over to Europe and on a road trip around the Alps it's done over 7,000 kilometers which is what a car like this is built to do goodness me now where the 918 Spider excels so significantly I think over the competition is how usable it is as a car you can jump in it feel quite at home. You know, I haven't driven one for ages, but I feel naturally able to drive this car and enjoy it. And it has some luggage space. You can take the roof off. It has this electrical integration that means it's very emissions friendly, city centre friendly. And yet, when you just drive it along, it's comfortable. The suspension is very reasonable. Yet with this car, it has the ability to go out onto, you know, the Nürburgring and set a time under seven minutes in the Weissach package, so the version of the car with slightly more aggression, but a little less pretty from the outside. And if you ordered Weissach, you sacrificed air conditioning and various other luxuries on the inside, which you could then add back. It was all, it was very silly, well, strange um, system and process. And you can hear me over the, uh, the wind noise. It just feels awesome and super smooth and heavenly. Woohoo! Yeah, that doesn't sound bad at all. You've got creature comforts, you've got a lift system, you've got a really good hi-fi system, you've got a nav, you've got all of this digital tech so you can put the wing always up if you prefer to have it always up in you know poser mode, otherwise it would be doing its active behavior as it helps to, to keep the car on the road and drive obviously to the maximum performance but just being in here it feels so remarkably cool and I think the thing that blows me away the most is even now the integration of technology into this car is just on a completely different level it's so so smooth smooth super smooth in the way they did it the way they went about it the way they made this technology possible and usable in a way that we can understand it but still have a V8 and still sound like this when you put your foot down. Just gently let the revs, revs build and then when you do change gear, you get that really loud pop and then you get some verbals. And I think it probably gets better when a car's done some good mileage. I love the way the shift lights work, if you can see on the indicator in front of me. They, illuminate around the exterior of the rev counter as you're putting your foot down up towards oh goodness me lots of unnecessary shifting i'm sorry about that i feel like the car deserves it just to let that sound a little loose It's heavy when you turn in tightly, but it's completely accurate in the steering feel. You get solid feedback. You can tell exactly how you're turning, and this is a gentle speed. Imagine what driving this would be like on a racetrack, where a car like this is built to be taken. Do you know what? It may not be the first time I've driven one, and it may not even be completely brand new, but the way this technology is done, and the way it feels, yet it's so unintimidating and usable even though even though you know that on a drag strip not much will touch it straight from a factory goodness me just feathering the throttle the power breathtaking now could you get more opposite than a 918 spider and a classic mini with a union jack on the roof that is awesome i love that <laughs> following a Corvette and then I hope you can hear this <laughs> what a sound on the road because 
I'm looking at the speedo and very conscious of how quickly it's increasing and heading towards dizzy dizzying figures that aren't necessarily where you should be driving it. But <laughs> the fun you can have, I mean, second gear, it revs up to 9,000 RPM. Just blinking your <laughs> I feel by way of some experimentation, let's just press race mode just to see if there's a different feel in the shifts. Suspension is controlled independently, you have a button for that up in the center console. But it's about the whole experience and it is just crazy for that. It launches you on the shift, it absolutely launches you forward. I think given that we're now back in town, it would be more appropriate to go into electric mode. Ah, oh, because we've been using all of the power, it needs to charge up a little bit before we can get it back in electric. There we go, back into full coasting electric mode. Which is, to be honest, all just a little bit drippy. The almost electrical whir in the background, it's so close to silence. Yeah, you're still aware that you're driving a car. You can feel the regenerative braking when you're pressing on the brakes. You get a different feel slightly as it's charging up using those. The air conditioning is about the noisiest thing in here right now, um, even with the roof down. Um, yeah. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. Now it's back in just being pure surreal. The background were. There are some things that I'm not the biggest fan of. The seats, I'm not gonna lie, they're very, very, very straight. But this is really nitpicking in a car with the technical capability of this. This is just pure surreal. Accelerating in full electric. You still have nearly 300 horsepower in electric mode to enjoy. Which would be a normal sports car in its own right. The car lets you know, you know, very much zero emissions, full environmental friendly mode. And you could drive like this for nearly 20 kilometers. The only thing that's left then is to turn it off. And given we're in electric mode, all that happens is the slight hum in the background disappears. But what an incredible drive. Big thanks to the 23 collection. That was awesome. And we have returned. So we've just put the roof back on the car, actually. You can see it back uh, covered up. But on a lovely evening like we've had today, I think it was only right to drive it top down and hear all of the noise. And interestingly, you hear, well, the amount of noise you hear is really rather different when you close off that barrier because the exhaust tips are literally, you know, that close to your head, not very far behind. And also the wing is up right now, which looks very nice right underneath the 23 Collection logo. I love that. I need to do a Shmi logo like that one day in my garage when the cars are on display. But the 918 Spider, it was a technological marvel when it was released. And to be completely honest, it really and truly still is. It is just something out of this world and spectacular. And I think it's a wonderful car that has that combination of being proper hypercar in terms of craziness in looks, abilities, capabilities, but also quite usable, really quite drivable. You just jump in it and on you go and it's not as extreme as the competitors at the time. What is interesting though, is where this industry is going. Now the next generation of hypercar, you have on one hand, you have the Aston Martin Red Bull Valkyrie, the Mercedes AMG Project One, and both of those are literally complete race car tech on the road, hugely impractical, I think, compared to this generation. On the other side, you have McLaren's BP23, which is more the Hyper GT, so more like a, a Bugatti in the sense that it's comfort and luxury and, hot and very high top speed, rather than necessarily the everyday driving side. And then, as we briefly talked about earlier, the new Tesla Roadster, the big, big, big talking point with its 1.9 second naught to 100 kilometers an hour, if they release it in 2020. Now, if they do, that is three years away. A lot of people have already asked, when am I gonna drive one? Well, if it's three years away until they even make one, it's at least three and a half years away until I can ever drive one. So it's gonna be at least that length of time. And I think it'll be interesting what other brands can do as well by then. Because if you think about it, this, 
was a test bed for Porsche's electrical systems, and it's presumably only a case of time until the Mission E arrives that we've seen, and then even more cars in the electric sports car segment from them and others. So all of that's gonna be very interesting to see. Then we've got to drive Project One and Valkyrie and see what they're like. So this whole, I guess, technological influence in our road cars is just crazy and moving so, so quickly. I mean, this is before we even get talking about full electric cars being the complete norm, autonomous driving, all of that side. Let's not even go there right now. But I think for driving today, that's been mega. If you're wondering why we haven't driven the Carrera GT, well, this particular car has barely done any miles at all. It's very, very, very nice, but we can just hear it quickly. <laughs> That V10 is one of the most perfect pitched engine sounds you could ever hear. And I have driven the Carrera GT before, so go check out the other videos on my channel. But for today, I would like to say a very big thank you to the 23 Collection. The link to his Instagram is down below. Do go give a follow, but I have had an awesome, awesome evening driving in the 918 Spider. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure to be subscribed and click the bell button down below to get instant notifications of new videos like this one and the other awesome stuff that I have planned. That's it for now though. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again to the 23 Collection and I'll catch up with you guys again very, very soon. Cheers.